I'm Lise LeBlanc, therapist, author, and life coach, and today I'm talking about how narcissistic parents groom their children not only to be their narcissistic supply, but also pre-program them to assume this role in their romantic and other relationships later on in life. First off, let me say that narcissistic parents typically present themselves very favorably to everyone else and they are commonly perceived as caring and nurturing parents. But behind the scenes, the reality is drastically different. Parents who publicly seem caring and involved in their children's lives may be that way, but they could also be cold, distant, and disrespectful, demanding, manipulative, and abusive in private. And that's the case with a narcissist. So the truth is, in a narcissistic family, each child is assigned a role, the golden child, the enabler, the scapegoat, and they're conditioned to meet the narcissist's needs and to uphold their delusional reality from the moment they're born. Not surprisingly, people who grew up with a narcissistic parent suffer for years and sometimes for a lifetime with low self-esteem, an insatiable need for validation, a fragmented sense of self, and they often struggle to maintain healthy relationships, particularly romantic ones. There are many strategies and tactics that narcissistic parents use to groom their children, uh, causing them to become vulnerable targets for narcissistic partners later on. So here are 10 of the most common tactics, but if you think of more, please add them to the comment section below. I love learning from you guys. Number one, narcissistic parents display competitive behavior. They are jealous and envious of their own children and they often use insults and microaggressions to cut them down and undermine them psychologically. And this, you know, subtle emotional attacks go on and on and they ensure that the child never develops healthy self-esteem or self-reliance. The child accepts the insults as the truth because they're being delivered to them by the people that they depend on for their very survival. And this often results in the child adopting the belief that they are inherently defective and deserving of mistreatment, causing them to accept such mistreatment later on. Number two, by constantly demeaning the child, the narcissist conditions them to rely on their validation and approval. So love becomes associated with gaining approval by fulfilling another person's needs, often at the expense of their own. Number three, narcissistic parents feel entitled to violate their children's boundaries, exercising control over their emotions, their decisions, their thoughts, their perceptions. And this sense of entitlement goes on even once the child matures, leading to ongoing invasions of privacy, uh, boundary violations in adulthood. Any resistance prompts further manipulation and coercion as the parent tries to rule their child's life, even when they're all grown up. And this lack of respect for boundaries can lead that person to accept invasive behavior from others, maybe even see it as normal and to struggle to say no and set boundaries. I recently was in a grocery store and I heard a full grown man asking his wife if he could have a bag of chips. And I thought like, whoa, like if you're on that short of a leash, you need to realize that it's not okay. I mean, imagine telling another adult what they can eat. Second thing you need to ask yourself if this is you is how the heck did you get here? If the answer is that you were raised by a narcissistic parent and you were constantly controlled, then let me suggest that maybe you need to clean out your hard drive because if you don't change your own wiring, even if you get out of this narcissistic relationship, you'll likely find yourself in another one and you'll be controlled by someone else. Number four, a child who's being manipulated, controlled, and coerced learns that standing up for themselves only makes things worse. And so they comply 
usually quickly, in order to avoid chaos, conflict, and further abuse. Such childhood experiences teach you to submit in order to maintain peace and to avoid being rejected. This at the expense of your own self-expression. Number five, narcissistic parents flaunt their children's accomplishments to boost their own ego, yet they rarely provide the child with true emotional support or even acknowledgement for their achievements in private. The parent is exploiting their children's successes to gain attention and to get credit. So for example, in public, they praise the child excessively, but privately, they knock them down, focusing on any mistakes that they may have made, any flaws, and this causes the child to readily accept blame and seek ways to fix and correct themselves, um, taking responsibility even when they're not at fault. Number six, narcissistic parents use guilt, fear, and other negative emotions to control and manipulate their children. The narcissistic parent knows each child's emotional triggers. They know exactly how to push their buttons and upset them because they installed most of these emotional buttons themselves, which they press whenever they want or need something. And this programs the child to be easily manipulated and to allow others to use their emotions and vulnerabilities against them. Number seven, Narcissistic parents play favorites, often pitting one child against the other, as well as pitting them against the other parent. So this keeps family members in competition and in conflict. The narcissistic parent triangulates, plants rotten seeds of doubt into each child's vulner vulnerable mind, and undermines, discredits, and damages the child's opinions and relationships with other family members. All this to maintain control and isolate the child from those who could provide emotional support, guidance, and love. Comparing you to others and playing favorites stems from jealousy, envy, and insecurity, and it's intended to motivate conflict and competition, conditioning the child to believe that these types of behavior is normal. Number eight, narcissistic parents regularly invalidate their children's feelings. Um, they trivialize their child's emotions and distress, telling them that they're too sensitive, overreacting. And this constant invalidation teaches the child that their emotions are not valid. They're not important, leading them to doubt their own feelings, second guess themselves, and in future relationships to tolerate partners who similarly dismiss or downplay their emotions and feelings. Number nine, narcissistic parents often provide love and approval only when the child meets their expectations or is serving their needs. This conditions the child to believe that love is earned through compliance and catering to others' desires. In adulthood, they might seek out parents who need and demand constant validation and compliance. As an adult who was raised in a narcissistic home, you will likely find yourself not only putting up with your partner's abusive, demanding behavior, but bending over backwards trying to meet their impossibly high standards and ever-changing goalposts. Number 10, narcissistic parents gaslight their children, distort their reality, make them doubt their own perceptions, their interpretations, their judgments, their memories. Uh, this manipulative behavior makes the child feel confused, destabilized, and unable to trust themselves. In future relationships, they may tolerate, you know, or even replicate gaslighting behavior. The insidious ways in which narcissistic parents condition their children for future narcissistic relationships is very concerning. The emotional manipulation, boundary violations, and psychologically abusive tactics used during the child's most vulnerable period of development sets the stage for a cycle of toxic relationships. As the person matures into an adult, they may unconsciously seek partners who replicate these familiar dynamics perpetuating a cycle of codependency, emotional turmoil, psychological manipulation, and abuse. So recognizing these patterns and understanding 
where they come from, is the first step towards breaking free from abuse. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, subscribe, and to learn more about narcissistic abuse, click on the link above.